So first up is uh, Panos, Panosotis, Papa Georgiou, um, with his work on the effective preservation of archaeological virtual reconstruction. So Panos completed his PhD at the University of Port Portsmouth, and about this he says that Many different professional communities are currently working on the preservation of complex digital objects, but there is not a unified structure which draws them all together and all the numerous threads which around preserving archaeological virtual reconstructions. So the PhD programme showed that archaeological virtual reconstructions are a blend of artistic and scientific scientific creativity. And these hybrid digital objects require delicate care to be preserved effectively in the long term. Thus, when considering a virtual reconstruction project, project, there are practical aspects that need to be tackled. And in addressing these issues, Panos's thesis presents a foundation, a preservation framework uh, for how these various sectors fit together. So Panos, I'm going to hand it over to you to tell us some more. Uh, let me share my screen here. While you're doing that, we should probably, yeah, Angela started a round of applause already. So well, well done. Congratulations on winning your award. Over to you. Yep. So, uh, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Panos. I was recently awarded uh, the Software Sustainability Institute's Research and Innovation Award during the International Conference uh, on Digital Preservation in Glasgow. Uh, for the next 15 minutes or so, I'm going to briefly discuss my work, offer update on my career progress, uh, share my thoughts on the future of our field, and finish my presentation uh, with my plans for uh, next year. So my first degree uh, was in cultural uh, technology, where I attended courses on uh, cultural heritage related subjects, uh, such as prehistoric archaeology as well as computer science related subjects, uh, such as human computer interaction. While I was a master's student, um, I examined closely the field of multimedia, uh, for example, intelligent media design, and also had the chance to get acquainted with advanced 3D technologies, uh, such as motion capture. My PhD was on the effective preservation of archaeological virtual reconstructions, as my other two qualifications, uh, it too followed this multidisciplinary trend. In the epicenter of my research lies the fusion of traditional archaeology with uh, 3D technologies. Uh, through my research, I have discovered that virtual reconstructions are a blend of scientific and artistic creativity. So I set out to find what would be an effective strategy for the preservation of these hybrid uh, digital objects. In order to allow effective and cost-efficient digital preservation strategies to be adopted, the chain of custody of the data needs to be started in the ground uh, by the archaeologist. The major outcome of my research uh, was a preservation framework. Towards the development of this framework, I have firstly recommended to the archaeologists uh, what research data to record and how. My recommendations uh, were focused on open preservation formats for data that will later feed into the production of virtual reconstructions made by the 3D creative professionals. My recommendation to the latter is to record every decision during the creative design process because it is important for the future user to know which part of the 3D model is based on scientific evidence and which is conjecture. To do this, some practical aspects were considered. For example, could these types of digital objects be emulated? Put simply, emulation is a computer technique that allows to run existing obsolete virtual reconstructions on a modern machine. Based on the requirements of the targeted user communities, 20-year-old virtual reconstructions were tested on emulation platforms to see if they can be accessed this way, and if so, do they maintain the original look and feel? The final results were uh, very positive. My recommended framework is, is not a silver bullet and needs to be ratified in real working environments. However, it provides a practical starting point for memory institutions 
to make decisions about the long-term preservation of hybrid digital objects submitted to their collections. The significance of keeping scientifically authenticated virtual reconstructions lies in the preservation of the ability to visit a structure remotely, to examine its otherwise inaccessible details, and eventually observe how it has changed over time. So through my research, I have mainly contributed to the digital preservation theory, uh, for instance, the newly defined category of hybrid digital objects, and the preservation of virtual reconstructions, for instance, the chain of custody of archaeological research data, among other things. So my research has so far led to one article that won the Digital Preservation Coalition uh, Best Paper Award at the first Digital Preservation for the Arts, Social Sciences and Humanities Conference. It was published in a special issue of the New Review of Information Networking Journal and has to date been referenced in a blog by Professor Paula Kalus and a book edited by Professor Risto Kuvilla. My research has also led to numerous presentations at research seminars, postgraduate conferences, and a festival of doctoral research, all hosted within the University of Portsmouth. It has also led to a radio interview on a Hellenic Broadcasting Corporation station during the 2018 edition of the World Digital Preservation Day, and a UNESCO blog published in Greek on the World Digital Preservation Day 2019. Last but not least, the celebration of the first ever World Digital Preservation Day in Greece uh, was based on the work done during my PhD program. Um, last November, uh, sorry, uh, yeah, this is my current situation now. This is where I am right now. So in chronological order, uh, I gave an interview immediately after the award ceremony. Then the press release of the University of Portsmouth regarding my award was republished by an Australian and a local news outlet. Uh, around the same time, I wrote a blog about my personal highlights uh, from my press uh, 22. Last November, I participated in this year's celebrations of the uh, World Digital Preservation Day with a radio special broadcast. If you would like to listen to it, you can scan the QR code on the bottom right corner. Additionally, I wrote a blog for the Software Sustainability Institute regarding my work and what winning an international award uh, means to me. Currently, I'm working on a blog for the Archivum, Data Archiving and Digital Preservation Solutions, and an abstract for the PV 2023 conference entitled Ensuring Long-Term Preservation and Adding Value to Scientific and Technical Data. Uh, come January, I will find out if I'm going to be one of the iPress 23 peer reviewers. Around the end of January, I'm going to offer an online introductory digital preservation session for the University of Portsmouth Graduate School. Lastly, I have one pending publication in the AREA journal. AREA stands for Arts and Interdisciplinary Research. Um, and here's like my personal vision statement, uh, first for my research and then for our field in, uh, in general. Uh, when it comes to my research, uh, to tackle the complexity of current systems, the archaeological community needs to shift towards preservation-ready objects rather than counting on digital preservationists. However, it is possible that my recommended framework could be extended and developed as a separate framework for preservation ready objects for the broader field of the preservation of digital archaeological data. Another area in which further research is required is the licenses of already obsolete software to be used later in the context of the existing preserved software. Future work needs to be done to define contracts with software suppliers or work with digital preservationists to lobby for a specific kind of open licensing under certain terms and conditions, both at the national and international level. As far as the emulation related topics discussed in my thesis uh, are concerned, the updated version of the BWFLA platform is the ASC Sandbox. ASC stands for Emulation as a Service 
uh, infrastructure. The significance of these platforms lies in that they abstract the technical expertise involved from the end users, allowing them to interact with emulated environments via their web browsers. Right now, there seems to be a need for further automation and simplification of digital preservation activities on the part of the, uh, of the user. Thus, research, uh, researchers are trying to apply new methodologies, such as artificial intelligence, machine learning, and natural language processing to facilitate the automation of traditional archival tasks, as well as access to archival material. Uh, concerning the ubiquitous storage issue, researchers from the Yale University in uh, partnership with Twist Bioscience, they are working their way around uh, DNA data storage. One of the latest developments in the field is the implementation of blockchain technology for trust and safety pertinent to record keeping. Researchers at the University of British Columbia have been looking into relevant issues for quite a while now. So for 2023, uh, I'm planning to seek uh, collaboration opportunities with uh, relevant research teams, such as the British School at Athens uh, Knossos Research Center, Imagination Lancaster, uh, the McDonald Institute for Archaeological Research, anybody that knows any other related uh, research group, something with 3D archaeology, digital preservation, please feel free to email me your suggestions. Um, Finally, I would like to offer an in-person version of my introductory digital preservation session and also start a podcast featuring innovative research as well as interviews with key figures uh, in the field. So I'll leave this slide just a moment if anyone wants to scan uh, and find out more about my article. I, was, I won the best paper award in 2015. All my contributions for the World Digital Preservation Day, 17, 18, 19, 22. Uh, the Software Sustainability Institute blog, the Australian news outlet, Miraz, and my interview uh, with Sarah Middleton. Again, <laughs> um, uh, please add me to your LinkedIn uh, connections. And here's my work email, if anyone wants to get in contact with me. Thank you very much for your attention. Thanks, Panos. Um, I wonder if I could just invite you all just to give Panos uh, a, a virtual round of applause, three cheers. Uh, congratulations uh, on, on winning your award because uh, the judges were really very impressed. Um, I think with the, they, they could see the potential and they could see all the work that you'd, you'd put into it and they could see how it could very, easily be practically applied um, for good use uh, within the field. Um, I wondered if, because I saw that you'd, you'd, you've you been very good at promoting, I don't know whether this is like part of the uh, the, the, the requirement for uh, a PhD project, I've never done one so I don't know, um, uh, you've done a lot of promotion, you've done a lot of sort of blogging and talking to people and interviewing and writing papers about your work and, and I guess that is part of part yeah. of the process isn't it and um, do you know of any uh any sort of practical applications where it's been used and have you heard have you heard of it being used and applied in real life if you like yeah so so far yeah my, my, my phd was uh, completed last year yeah uh so far I, I don't know of anybody that actually implemented uh, my preservation framework yet i'd love to see that of course mm -hmm. but there is an anecdotal uh, story that came right after the interview uh, the IPRESS 22 in Glasgow. Uh, there was an academic from uh, a researcher uh, from the University of Liverpool. I don't know if I should say the name or not, but yeah, with Judith Carr. Mm -hmm. uh, she approached me and said that uh, their University of Liverpool, they work uh, something with 3D imagery, if I remember correctly, a collection of 3D images, that they should definitely reference my work that they didn't know about something like a framework like mine existed before, that they should definitely start implementing implementing it and reference my work. Mm. I was really happy, of course, with that. Yeah. But other than that, I don't have any information at the moment that anyone's implementing it. Yeah, because you told me in the interview that we did straight after, when everyone was all sort of giddy and woo, uh, after the ceremony, that, that your sort of 
dream come true sort of as a result of the award um, would be that it was picked up and it was used and it was applied wasn't it so that yes. was yeah no, no, no. I would say like, yeah, I would be happy to see it applied. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's it's finally being recognized. Yeah. So I hope hopefully now in give it a, a little bit of time, then it will start be applying. Excellent. From archaeologists, yeah. Anyone cool. that's, who's interested. Yeah. Well, um, I think uh archaeology and archaeologists um seem to form uh, quite a little group of of, of digital preservation this it seems to be a route through yeah. and into digital preservation doesn't it um I, I jen i hope you don't mind me calling on you because you were one of the judges as well and as well as being um uh, an, an archaeologist yourself um you can you remember any of the particular uh things that the judges picked out sorry jen for putting you on the spot um for the you know as part of the judging process I didn't actually judge this category. Oh, so you should have. You would have been good at it. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. Um, actually, while I've while I've got the mic, I did have a question um for Panos, if that's okay. Yeah. Uh, so you mentioned briefly you had a targeted user community when carrying out this work. And I wondered if you could just say a bit more about how you defined and perhaps documented that community um and their skill sets or knowledge base. Yes, that's a really good question. Yeah, that was uh I think it took two chapters of my thesis. <laughs> uh, this whole thing, yeah, designated communities. Um, so I, I I used like semi-structured interviews and questionnaires. The questionnaires were targeted um, in digital repositories. So uh, I did some research to find if there are any dedicated uh, digital repositories regarding archaeology. Uh, definitely archaeology data service, for example, <laughs> it's one. Uh, DRI was the other one I I, um, I approached and then a digital curation unit uh, in Greece and the digital curation, uh, the, the, no, the data archival, uh, data archive and network services, the dance in the Netherlands. And when it comes to actual uh, professionals, uh, it was semi-structured interviews with uh, librarians, uh, archivists and archeologists. Um, what I gather is when it comes to these, Kind of advanced uh, technologies. None of them know, like they didn't know what emulation is. I needed to explain what emulation is. Uh, most of them they welcomed, and they found it really uh, all the uh, the strengths that uh, emula an emulation strategy could offer. Accepted that, but um, as I mentioned about automation and simplification, said so like uh, stay away from me. Just <laughs> do the machine. Let the machine do. Uh, whatever it does by just a, a click of a button and uh, that's it, I don't want to know more. But, uh, but there were, uh, specifically there was an archeologist uh, in Greece and who's really negative and I used it in my thesis and used his view because he actually uh, let me prove him wrong. So that was really good for me. I don't know if he did it on purpose or not, but it worked fine for me. Uh, he was like, I don't understand what's that. Uh, don't help me with my primary research. He was really negative. Like uh, I can see that maybe it's from, from your, your own field to see the history of digital objects and how digital technologies and how all they progress. But as an archeologist, doesn't help me with my primary research. It's just a fancy toy. <laughs> I said, okay, I can prove you wrong. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, I tried to explain to him what the dynamic digital object mean and uh, 3D uh, re virtual reconstruction. Uh, all this kind of stuff and then slowly started getting it like oh yeah yeah i can see <laughs> why it's uh it's it's useful uh so yeah the, the, it was the research i don't know if that answered your question jenny but uh yeah so i focused there and then i mentioned that it's for the future researcher of course and the public who wants to know uh other than the future researcher and some specialists the rest, uh, I wouldn't expect them to know uh, the technicalities behind uh, emulation or uh, emulation platforms. So yeah, automation and simplification uh, for them. That's really helpful, thanks. So we're doing a bit of work at the moment looking at designated communities, which is obviously what you're what you're referring to here. Um, so it's just interesting to hear how people have tackled that, but I think that there's maybe two chapters of your PhD I should read. <laughs> but yeah, and, and now that you mentioned that, it's uh, there are of course limitations, 
uh, in my research and all these professionals, the archivists, uh, librarians and archaeologists uh, were based in Greece. Um, so you have to, they didn't have the financial aid from the government when they work for governmental institutions. Uh, again, the technology, the, the, the whole archaeology, the setup of uh, archaeological sector in Greece is totally different uh, than UK. Now UK is, is with contracts, right? They work with contracts. They go somewhere, they dig, uh, they did professional, kind of more professional. There it's more academic university excavations. They're taking their time and uh, with minimum budgets. Uh, so it's kind of different, yeah. But still, it's, it was good to have a, a view of uh, what they're thinking about emulation, or thinking about preserving the research data in digital formats in, in general. Very good. Uh, I can see Paul's got his his hand up, um, and we'll go to you, Paul, and then probably move on to our next speaker. Thanks, Eric. Um, thanks, Panos. That was a great presentation. Um, touching lots of different aspects of digital preservation as well. Really interesting. Um, I've got a comment and a question, um, or perhaps actually an invitation. So um, you mentioned the licensing issues around licensing software that you need to emulate to be able to access the data. Um, there's a um, task force that DPC is um, about to launch. In fact, I'm, I'm just arranging dates for it now. It's going to be early next year. That's going to be looking at just that issue. So um, the challenges around copyright and licensing, uh, particularly relating to to um, when using emulation and preservation. So um, that's initially going to be um, for DPC members, and then perhaps we might look to even even work with others as well. But it will be um, great to have you involved in that if you'd uh, if you'd like. To come along maybe we can mm -hmm. chat chat further offline but be brilliant to bring your experience into that um to that effort um i've got a question for you as well yeah um you mentioned the the sort of skepticism about uh emulation from some quarters in, in terms of using emulation um the sort of end users to access the data i think there's also some um skepticism perhaps a bit of apprehension about using potentially such a complex technology from from the some some sectors of the digital preservation community as well so i wondered if you could give us an impression of um how complex it was to set up the emulation um, technology you used to be able to emulate those test cases that you described and and how much effort did it require? Was it was it fairly straightforward to do, or did it did it take a lot of effort to get there? That, 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 <laughs> that's another. It takes me back seven years <laughs> during the PhD. That, that's a good one. Yeah. Um, so I, I try. Um, I'm collaborated with um, a researcher. I don't think he's working at the University of Freiburg anymore. Uh, Professor Klaus Reichert, and uh, he was then working on the BWFLA demo, one of the first, it was, they started 2011, uh, I approached them 2013, when I started my PhD. And I was trying to actually set up my own instance, as it's called, um, in, a, in a desktop machine at the University of Portsmouth. Um, a lot of, uh, have to know how to work in Ubuntu software, and then they had something called Dockerized version. <laughs> it's not, I'm not a programmer, these guys are uh, computer engineers, uh, so I tried to follow up. Uh, I asked help from technicians here as well uh, at uni. Uh, by the way, we're allowed to do that as PhD students. So, uh, but no one, no one could help me. So um, one of my supervisors, uh, Janet Delve, Janet Anderson, now, she was like, "Okay, this guy's working on something that's cloud ba cloud based. Why you don't contact them and see if you instead of actually create your own instance here, you work it on on, on the cloud." So they provided me access pretty much straightforward from then on. I need to I need to read a lot to understand how that works because it's like a it's a it's a framework. So they have it. It's quite simplified if you see it, but I don't think uh, a lot of people without a, a little bit of computer science background could understand it. But they give me access to the early demos. Uh, I need to read a lot to understand how that works. And for me, it was more like clicking buttons and playing. And uh, I did the I conducted evaluation uh, tests, uh, rendering case studies, uh, as I call them in, in my thesis. So, um, but I needed to understand because sometimes I help a lot, like with Klaus, we're back and forth for quite a few months uh, to create to add different um, uh, operating systems in, in their third hosted third party emulators. Because I think at the moment they've had only 
uh, Windows 98 and I wanted to test on Windows XP or they have only Windows 2000. So a lot of disk images. So I need to find out how to create a disk image, uh, transfer over to, to Klaus. He installed it then. I need to test if it's playing from my end. So we did like real, uh, real testing, real time uh, testing of, of their demo. And uh, from then on, yeah, uh, it, was, it was pretty simple, I would say. Uh, once you understand how that works, it was all a like click, click, download, extract the final zip folder. Here it is, you open it and say like, oh yeah, it's the same as 20, 20 years ago. It's exactly the same image. Uh, the colors are there or whatever I was seeing, the original one. Uh, but was the, that was the thing I was, uh, most of the, uh, my data was provided by Drew Baker. He used to work for King's Visualization Lab. I think he's an independent researcher now. And um, it was on uh, 3ds Max 7. That was released 2004. <laughs> and of course, the, there was the, the license was expired. So technically, that's how I mentioned legal issues as well around digital preservation. Technically, I did something illegal, but for research purposes, <laughs> so that's, that's allowed uh, to kind of hack the, the expired license. And that's emulation. I mean, the kind of hacking the whole thing. Um, so yeah, that's why I said open licensing. What's going to happen in this case with the 3DS Max 7? The license is expired. How can we legally use it to uh, preserve uh, obsolete virtual constructions? Thanks for that. And it's it's um, it's interesting to see you were kind of at the start of that emulation framework being developed, really, and it's progressed quite a lot since then. So <laughs> I think things have got it much easier for users as well. But it's great to see that you you contributed to the development of that. <laughs> Thank you. And thank you for your suggestion. Yeah. Great stuff. Well, um, you've just had a, I don't know whether you spotted this in the chat box. Uh, Nicola suggests uh, contacting Professor Bruce Gibson at the University of Liverpool as well so, and gives a contact there. So more, more and new and other contacts. Uh, so thank you for that, Nicola. Thank you. Thank you very much.